to the uh, great common sense conservative MP and the prosecutor. You were actually a, a real life prosecutor before you took office as an MP, right? For 30 years. For 30 years, he put bad guys in the slammer. And now he's prosecuting uh, corruption and criminality in the Trudeau government. Uh, so a very important job asking the tough questions that we need to ask. Uh, because uh, as you know, after nine years, Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost, crime and corruption. After nine years of Trudeau, everything is broken. Um, everything costs more. Work doesn't pay. Housing costs have doubled. We now have 76% of young people believe they will never be able to afford a home. Uh, Toronto became the worst housing bubble in the world, according to UBS Bank in 2022. Vancouver remains the third most overpriced housing market in the world when you compare incomes to home prices, home, which have risen nationwide 40% faster than wages. That's the worst gap of any country in the G7, the second worst in, of almost 40 OECD countries. Um, and it's a real human, it's not just numbers, it's human uh, suffering. Um, Toronto, can you believe this? Toronto has added 50 homeless encampments in three months. Wow. 50 homeless encampments in three months. To bringing the total to 256 in our richest and biggest city. And then there's the crime, the chaos, the drugs and disorder, our, our streets are turning into war zones. Machine guns spraying bullets in White Rock, British Columbia. Um, shootings right out in the open. Carjackings out of this, out of this world. Our businesses receiving extortion letters uh, saying pay up or we're going to shoot up your, ch your child's uh, bedroom in the middle of the night. Uh, these, these are stories we never imagined we would hear in Canada. It, it sounds like we're in a third world country. Uh, I, I was just at a business uh, earlier today, and the owner was showing me the gates that he's putting up in his home so that if people break into the house, there'll be another gate keeping them out of his bedroom. He has an actual gate to, to separate his bedroom from the rest of the house so that when that alarm system goes off at two in the morning, you know, a burglar who might be coming to do harm will at least be held back uh, from going into the room and killing him and his wife. Uh, these are things that people used to do in uh, extremely dangerous third world countries, but they came to Canada to get away from all of that. Um, and they, that's what Canada, Canada was a safe haven for our people uh, years ago. It was a place where anybody from anywhere could do anything where hard work paid off, where it didn't matter where you came from, it mattered where you were going, it didn't matter who you knew, it mattered what you could do. That's the reason my wife came here as a refugee. And it's the reason why countless others do the same every year. Um, but now people are going back in the other direction. I don't know if you saw this article in the CBC, the number of Canadians leaving to the US up 70%. And the number one cause, according to the CBC article, I was really surprised to see this in CBC. People are trying to get away from Trudeau. They can't afford him. They said that we, I, we, we don't want to stay in this country as long as he's prime minister, raising taxes, attacking businesses, shutting down housing construction, unleashing crime in our communities. But the good news is life was not like this before Justin Trudeau, and it won't be like this after he's gone. We're going to turn the hurt that he's caused into the hope that Canadians need with a common sense plan to ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. We will ax the carbon tax to lower gas, heat, and grocery bills. We'll lower income taxes so you bring home more of each dollar you earn and hard work pays off. But to cut taxes, we have to fix the budget with a dollar for dollar law that will require we find an equal amount of savings for every new amount in spending. We'll cut the waste and mismanagement, the consultants and the bureaucracy to bring down the cost on our people and let people bring home more. But they need homes to bring it to. And that's why we have a plan to build the homes, not the bureaucracy. 
that 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 plan will require municipalities permit 15 percent more home building per year and uh, permit high density sky rises around every federally funded transit station uh, as a condition of getting federal money. We're going to sell off 6,000 federal buildings and thousands of acres of federal land to build, build, build. We're going to get rid of the carbon tax to lower the cost of building materials. So we're going to bring these homes in safe neighborhoods. We'll bring in jail, not bail. Jail, not bail for repeat violent offenders. Repeat offenders will be ineligible for bail, parole, or house arrest. They will stay behind bars. We will secure our ports so that we, with scanners, scanners to peer into each of the shipping containers that go out in Montreal, Halifax, Vancouver, and Prince Rupert. These shipping containers contain stolen cars. Only 1% of containers are scanned right now. That's how the cars get out. By having high powered scanners, we can interrupt those exports. So it's pretty simple, right? You have a shipping container. The manifest says that it's got, um, let's, call, let's say it's got uh, donuts in it. It says on there that this is a shipping container full of donuts. We have a new scanner. The scanner looks right through the metal and says, well, that actually doesn't look like donuts. It looks like a Beamer. So maybe we should pull that container aside and we'll open it up and we'll take out the Beamer and we'll look at the VIN number. We'll call the person whose name matches the VIN and we'll say, hi there, Mr. Smith in uh, Brampton. Uh, we note that your Beamer is in a shipping container. Were you planning to send it to Beirut? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. I was planning to drive it to work. Well, it went missing late last night and it was about to go to Beirut. We have it for you. We're going to give it back. And then check who ordered the shipping container and go up to that person's house and arrest them. Mm -hmm. yes. This does not, is this complicated? It's common sense. <laughs> like, I, I, can you believe we're not already doing this? It's just so obvious. Yet we're spending billions of dollars trying to get to <clears throat> confiscate guns from law abiding, licensed, trained and tested hunters and sports shooters. They've already been vetted by the RCMP they're licensed people. The Trudeau government has spent $40 million trying to, to, to take their firearms away. They haven't been able to get a single one. Why not, st why not allow the sports shooters and hunters who we know are following the law and have a license, keep their firearms and put the money into securing the border to stop illegal firearms from coming in? That's the common sense plan. Doesn't that make sense? That's how, what we're gonna do. We're gonna cut back on aid to dictators, terrorists, and multinational bureaucracies, and put that money into rebuilding our military so that our troops can keep our country strong and free. We're going to renew strength, and pride, and love of country based on the common sense of the common people united for our common home. Your home, my home, our home. Let's bring it home. Bill C-381 by deputy leader, which was uh, to keep extortionists in the jail for a long time, that failed in the parliament. Uh, Foreign interference, NDP voted against that. Change of the election dates, just if we change to one day, it will cost taxpayers 120 million. So everywhere we see that political parties, they are acting as this is their own uh, convenience and they are not thinking about taxpayers. Taxpayers are struggling today, either the mortgage or the crime or the, we, we name it, housing crisis, the international students, the immigration, everybody is struggling today. So politics has become, in Canada has become a politics of convenience. This, and after that I would like uh, if uh, uh, prosecutor MP Brock also say a few words on the arrive scan result because we are following uh, MP Brock for a long time and uh, they are working very hard on those scandals and Canadians are shocked with all the results so far. But where that will lead to in the end? Will anyone will be charged? They will be behind the bars, or it will keep on rolling for another one year, and uh, we are uh, we are putting taxpayers' money on those investigations. What will be the result? But first, on that later. Thank you. Look, uh, on the pension thing, 
it's you know Trudeau's trying to bump the election back a few weeks so that he can uh, that all of his MPs are eligible for a pension. Jagmeet Singh is on a, in a coalition with Trudeau. Why? Because Singh needs to go until 2025 before he becomes eligible for his pension. That's what's going on right now. And we need the government. We need a government that actually works for the people. And uh, uh, we want an election, a carbon tax election, right now. Uh, we don't want to wait because Canadians can't afford another year and a half of Trudeau and Singh. Um, on the Rive scan, why don't you go in? On the foreign interference. Foreign interference. So. Okay, the government actually introduced a decent bill, C-70. This will bring a foreign agent registry uh, that will allow us to track anyone who's paid by a foreign government to influence our democracy. Um, and it will do a number of other things to help protect against the interference of Beijing, of Russia, and of other foreign interests. Uh, we told the government, we sent a letter to the Liberal Minister and said, we'll help you pass this. We want it to be law by Canada Day. Jagmeet Singh has stood up to block it now. I don't know what he's thinking. Uh, I don't know who he's trying to protect, what foreign interest he wants to preserve, uh, but he's the obstacle. And you can see it. We, uh, we offered unanimous consent to, to pass a government bill and only Jagmeet Singh objected to it. So I don't know, you should ask Jagmeet Singh why he's blocking a foreign interference law. Does he want more foreign interference in our country? Uh, only he can answer that question. Of justice, we need to get rid of the catch and release system. Catch and release is causing more crime. The same 40 offenders had to be arrested 6,000 times in BC. Why? Because they get out on bail and then they're rearrested and then they're retried. And then they come, then they're released, and they're rearrested, and they're retried over and over again. If we just left them in jail, then they wouldn't be able to reoffend, and then you would have less demand on straining our justice system. Secondly, the Trudeau government has not been appointing judges. We have a shortage of judges to process criminal trials. How many short? How many short are we right now? Eighty-nine. Eighty-nine judges. At which level in the court? Uh, federal. Federal court. So eighty-nine judges. Uh, are not appointed, so the cases sit and sit and sit. And then, because the offender's case is dragged on, the charges get dropped because they, uh, under the under the rules the car that the Supreme Court has established, is it the Jordan the Jordan, 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 Prin Jordan principle? You can't be charged into eternity because, in fair, it's not really fair to either the accused or to the victim to have a case that's just running and running. So they throw it out. And someone could commit a very serious crime and get off, not because they're innocent, but just because it's been too long. So appoint the judges, lock up the hardened criminals, reduce the strain on the system, and give both victim and the accused justice quickly. Protect our people in this country, and that's what I will do. You know, it's clear that Canada's population is under threat by Justin Trudeau's failure to protect our people. We are not protecting Canadians. In uh, never before has our population been more under threat. These sorts of things weren't happening before Trudeau. I don't ever remember things like this, but because he's, he's uh, unleashed crime and chaos in our community, everyone is endangered. Thank you.